This video is a part of a free chapter from my new course, The Blendinator. Click the links in the description to learn more. So this is the result we had from the last video where we took an image and we projected it from the camera view onto our geometry. And to get the precise location of our camera and the rotation and the orientation in 3D space, we use a program called FSpy. And if we go into camera view, we can see the image that we use. So we used this image in FSpy to line up the X and Y coordinates and the Z coordinates in order to get the right focal length and positioning of the camera. And then from there, we brought it into Blender and then we started modeling just a basic plane and then extruded it and moved it to the boundaries of the Exploding Kittens game box that we have. And because we lined everything up in FSpy, everything lines up perfectly or almost perfectly. However, the issue that we're having now is that our texture uh, does not stick to our object. So if we move the object, you can see that the image that's being projected stays in the same place. And if we move the camera, you can see that the image moves with the camera. Now we can move both of them together if we grab them together and move it, and then it looks like it's sticking. But we don't wanna do it that way. We want to be able to stick the texture onto the object itself so that when we move the object, the texture moves along with it. And to do this, we need to talk about UV maps. And currently we have our UV project modifier that's projecting everything using the default UV map that came with our plane, which is down here. And you can see the default UV map. This was here by default when we added the plane. And remember, we built this not from a cube, but from a plane. And I'm gonna be switching back and forth between UV maps and the modifiers a lot in this video. So instead, what I'm gonna do is drag out a duplicated area here. And then in the top one, we'll keep this on our modifiers. And down here, we can go to our data tab. And then I'm also going to close vertex and shape keys for now. And now we can see our UV map down here and up here at the same time. So to see what our UV map looks like, let's go to the UV editing workspace. And then we want to make sure that our object is selected and we are in edit mode, which should be by default. But if not, just tab into edit mode. And then we need to press A to select all of the geometry and scroll out over here. And now we can see we have our UVs. Now they look completely flat and rectangular because again, we started with a plane, but then since we've started, we've added more geometry. So now if I come over to our tweak and just grab one vertex and move that, you can see we have more geometry that's more representative of uh, some sort of box. But if we come over here to material preview mode, uh, you can see that no matter how much we move our UVs, nothing changes here on our object. And something I'm going to do is come to the overlays and uncheck faces just so that we can see this a little bit better. Oh, and it looks like we're also going to have to drag this out and do the same thing. We'll duplicate this area. This will be our UV modifier, and then down here will be our UV map. But the reason we don't see any changes here is because the UV project modifier overrides the UV map, whatever it is. Now, for some unknown reason, which is still a mystery to me, is why it even needs a UV map. But apparently it still does. It's insecure. It's like, oh, I need to know that there's a UV map here. So when you select it, it's like, okay, there's a UV map but then it ignores anything about the UV map that exists. So not sure why it works that way, but that's the way it works. So I'm going to just undo all of this here just to get this back to the way it was. And so to get this to stick and separate from the project modifier, we need to apply this. But before we apply this, I want to duplicate my UV map over here. Let's bring this down, make some more room here. So just select it, which is the only one. So it's the only one that you can select. Press plus, and then now we have a duplicate. Uh, I'm gonna rename the duplicate to mod. And this one is gonna be original. So we got our original UV map, and then this will be for our modifier. And you can already see that since we've changed the name, Blender doesn't automatically recognize that we've changed the name. Now this is in 3.6, so in later versions, this might change, but for now, we actually have to physically come back here and change this back to one of these and I'm going to choose the mod because it is the modifier and it didn't take 
And the reason it didn't take, I'm guessing, is because we were still in edit mode. So tab back out into object mode, and then we can select our mod. There we go. Except for now, everything is completely messed up, and that's just because of the active render. So right now, we still have our original UV map selected, and it's the active render. So let's tab back into edit mode, and then we can see if I select our original, we have our original here. And if we select our modified, we haven't changed it from the original, so it's the exact duplicate, so it looks the same. But if I switch the active render, you can see it now uses the mod, which is using the project modifier. So whatever I have selected as the active render here is going to be what we see in the 3D preview. And so if I select the original and then now I start to move around, you can start to see something here is happening. So this whole, this whole top face here contains everything that we see in our image because the four corners are right here. So if I move this corner, you can see, uh, that's the top right corner, and if I move the top left corner, you can see that that's happening here. And it's just stretching and skewing it along the top face, which is this face right here. So I'm going to undo that. But if I change the active render back to our modified projection, and if I select that, and keep in mind that selecting the UV map is different than making it the active render. So they're two separate selections, the active render and then selecting the UV map. And this selects it so that we can edit it over here in the UV work area. And this will be a little bit more obvious in just a moment, but we want to get this to actually stick because if we move our UVs for the modifier, you can see that still nothing happens. But now that we have a duplicated version, we're going to, on a modifier, we can now apply the modifier um, except for we can't do it in edit mode, so we need to tab back out into object mode and then click apply. And you can see that once we applied it, we get a little bit of our warping back, but we will address that a little bit later. For now, let's tab back into edit mode and we can see what happened to our UVs. Just make sure we have all of our geometry selected by pressing A, and you can see over here, I only have these two selected, so I can press A here or double A to deselect. So the selection over here is separate from selecting it over here for now. But now if I come over here to our UV maps and I select the original again, we see the original. And so depending on what I select here, we can go back and forth. And the same thing applies if we use one for the active render. This UV map is using for the active render in our 3D view. And then if I select this one, I can see it over here, but see it in our 3D preview as well, we have to make that the active render. So I hope that's starting to make sense, but what we can do now is we can take these UVs and start to move them, and you can see that it actually does now affect the texture on our object. And not only that, if we come over here and start to move our geometry, you can see the texture is actually sticking to our object. And same thing if we tab out of edit mode, if we only have this selected and not the camera, we can press G to grab and move it wherever we want because now the texture is sticking to the object itself apart from the camera because the projection modifier was what was linking the camera and the image to project onto the object. But once we applied it, we say, okay, yes, we want this. And then it realizes that UV map down here and it helps the image to stick to that object. Now you can get the same result while completely bypassing the UV project modifier. And instead, what we can do is use the UV project from view. So if we go into edit mode and we select everything, and then before I project, I actually want to just add another one. I'm going to take the original one and then duplicate that one. So this will be, I'll title this view. So this will be project from view. So make sure that's selected. I can also make sure that's the active render. And then over in the preview with all of our geometry selected, press U and then select project from view. And now you can see that it's projecting it from the current user preview, whatever the user sees over here. So if I rotate like this and I do that again, project from view, you can see it's matching what we see in the preview. So with this, all we have to do is go into our camera view, which is already lined up, press U and then project from view, we get the same result. So now if I 
select my original. This is what the original looks like. Here's the one from the applied modifier, and here's the one from the project from view. And you can see, if I deselect everything, that they are the exact same thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the project from view. We don't need that. So now you might ask yourself, well, if we can just bypass the UV project modifier and just do this instead, why don't we just do that? And the answer is because of the warping that we get. Our object has reverted to some of the warping that we had previously. And it's done so even though we still have a subdivision surface modifier. And if we disable the subdivision surface, we have even more warping. So this is the warping that we had at the very beginning in the last video, where we just first used our projection modifier on our simple geometry here. And then we added a subdivision surface, which gave us this, so it smoothed it out a little bit. But it was our project modifier that made everything completely straight, like you see in the image. So why did we lose that when we applied the modifier? Well, if you remember from the last video, we were talking about the order of operations. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to bring this back, use our modifier, image 1920 by 1080, and then, of course, our FSpy camera. Okay, so now we have it back completely straight with no warping. So what's going on here is the order of operations is the subdivision surface modifier is acting first, and then the UV project modifier is acting second. If we reverse the order, if we click and drag and put this at the top, you can see our UV project modifier is now first in the order of operations, and then our subdivision surface, which gives us this same exact result. So when we start to apply the modifiers, the order of operations changes depending on which modifier we apply first. So it doesn't matter where this is in the stack. It could be second, it could be last, it could be first. But if this is the first modifier that I apply, then this is going to be the first order of operations. And then even if I apply this one, it's not going to change because that's already being done second. So if I undo that, in order for everything to stick like this, with no warping, I have to apply the subdivision surface modifier first, and then this one second. And now you can see we've applied all of our modifiers, and there is no warping. However, there is a downside to this method, and that is, if we tab back into edit mode, you can see we have much more geometry now. And now if we want to adjust or change this at all, we have to be able to select all of our geometry first. So if I just want to move this and grab on the X and move that out, you can see it's a lot more tedious to select everything, but then it, we have unnecessary warping or stretching. It's just going to create a lot of headache in the future. So I don't like this method, so I'm just going to undo, get our subdivision surface modifier back and then I'm going to add in our project again and change everything back to how I had it and the order of operations is correct here subdivision is first and then the UV project and by the way if you're wondering the project from view is the same type of thing so if we duplicate our original and then we just disable this here go into edit mode and here's our UV map that's duplicated select everything you project from view, um, you can see we still have that warping. And that's because this is automatically applied first as an order of operations because we didn't use the modifier. So it's applied before the subdivision. So this comes first and then this comes second. That's why we still have warping even though we have an active subdivision surface modifier. So just remember that the order of operations applies not only in the stack that you see here, this is first and this is second, but also in the order of application. So applying first, applying second, or if we create a UV map and do you project from view, this is first, and then whatever is in our modifier stack comes second. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one again, and I'll show you what I do instead. So let's just come back to the front mode here. Let's enable this again so we can get everything straightened back out. And to keep our object like this where we can keep the texture stuck like this, but get rid of these modifiers and not create any more warping, what we have to do is either texture painting or texture baking.
And I'll show you that process in the next video. So when you're ready, head on over there.